Man dies, shocking near-death revelation, witnessing early V3 with Jesus. Everyone, while Korea's reunification is still uncertain and the world's future feels a bit shaky, our storyteller remains convinced of his unique experience. In these uncertain times, he's sharing the story to offer hope. Now, let's get into it. How do you even start a near-death experience story about the world's future? It's a question he's pondered for over three decades, especially as he's faced skepticism. But he's here to share, ready for any raised eyebrows, because sometimes you find wisdom in the most unexpected places. In 1991, he was an 18-year-old kid without a worry in the world. The only concern at that time was whether the Soviets would continue their saber-rattling. He was the captain of the high school football team, dating the girl who would become his future wife after college and had several schools recruiting him. He knew what he wanted to be, and a full scholarship was a wonderful thought, even if he never made it to the NFL as he had dreamed since his time in Pee Wee League. That year, they were one game away from an undefeated season, and everything hinged on this one game. The day before the game, students wished them luck, as their school had never achieved an undefeated season. The day of the game was filled with excitement and high intensity, with students chanting, we're going to crush them, and undefeated baby. Although they were confident of their victory, there was always that lingering what if. To avoid making the story solely about football, they did go on to defeat the other team 42-35, and celebrations extended into the early morning hours. This joyous atmosphere persisted for most of the year, with the team being invited to numerous parties. The night of his NDA, he had an unsettling premonition that he shouldn't attend a particular party. A voice deep down advised him, James, don't go, stay home. You can miss one little party. He wishes he had hated that voice, but he was a carefree 18-year-old at the time. Derek, the co-captain of the team, had informed people about a party near his house. Derek was an imposing figure at 6'5", and 275 pounds, and his aggressive behavior, especially when intoxicated, was known to all. He had often had to intervene to keep him out of trouble at parties, and this night was no exception. He and his future wife arrived at the party 30 minutes late. They were offered substances they should have declined. A commotion near the front door drew his attention. Derek faced off with a stranger ready for a fight. An inner voice warned him not to get involved, but he ignored it and stepped in, trying to calm Derek. The situation escalated, leading to a brawl. After the fight was broken up, they thought it was over, but the guy returned with a weapon, shooting Derek and him. He observed the chaos from a distance as his girlfriend and friend panicked. Paramedics arrived, and he felt detached from his body. He heard their conversation about his gunshot wounds and watched them load him into the ambulance. His spirit was tucked along as the ambulance drove away. Suddenly, he found himself inside the ambulance, observing the paramedic's efforts on what he called his body. He exclaimed, Come on, kid, don't you dare die on me. He watched as he radioed the hospital. I've got an 18-year-old male gunshot victim with multiple gunshot wounds. I have an ET tube in, but this kid likely has a collapsed lung. Prepare the trauma team. As he observed, the body on the gurney began to convulse and then went limp. He felt his spirit or soul accelerate at the speed of light through a tunnel of clouds brighter than the sun. He thought, this must be what it's like to be sucked up by a tornado as he continued through the tunnel of light. Once he passed through the clouds and the blinding light, he began to comprehend the situation. He heard the most beautiful singing and floated closer to its source, which is when he saw him. As soon as he saw him and the angels singing to him, he knew two things. First, he was dead. Second, he wanted to stay. The overwhelming feelings of love and peace that enveloped him cannot be conveyed with our limited vocabulary. Imagine the greatest joy you've ever experienced, magnify it a billionfold, and you still wouldn't come close. He floated there in pure awe as Jesus approached him. He wore a long robe, brownish sandals, had greenish eyes with a bluish tint to his pupils, curly hair, and a neatly trimmed mustache and beard. Coming from a religious background, he knew what Jesus looked like, and the depictions on earth do not do him justice. The closest representation he's seen that comes close is something he encountered in 2016, 25 years after his experience. The image was titled Prince of Peace. 
He was lost in thought when he was abruptly startled by Jesus, who spoke directly into his head. Hello James, Jesus said, as if he had been his friend for all of eternity. His words echoed in his head, making him feel like he was scanning him. No, my son, you are not dead. You are in between. In between, he finally mumbled. Yes, my son, your spirit is at a crossroads. It has not chosen to return home, as there are things anchoring you to your earthly life. He knew what was keeping him tethered, but the desire to stay was overwhelming. What happens if I choose to stay? He silently asked. If you stay, you will come to live with me and my Father in heaven. And what if I decide to go back? He wondered. Jesus smiled and replied, You will bring great happiness to many, especially those who have not been born yet. As he spoke, three children suddenly appeared, addressing him as their father. Faced with the sight of his future kids calling him dad, the choice was clear. At this point he made his choice, communicating to Jesus. Very well, my son, Jesus replied, but there is something else I must show you before sending you back. Earth is undergoing significant changes and you need to be aware of what lies ahead. Without delay, a review of his life began. He saw moments of pride and regret, felt the pain he caused, the heartbreak he inflicted on others, and the haunting memory of hurtful words spoken to his mom. Throughout this life review, Jesus neither judged nor chastised him. After the review, he witnessed his future and Earth's future. Due to his injuries, he would lose his college scholarship, eventually attending a trade school to learn welding. His girlfriend would go to college in another state, leading to a temporary separation, but they would later reconnect, get married, and have the children who had appeared beside him and Jesus. Many other personal details were revealed to him, which he preferred to keep private for now. Unfortunately, he wasn't shown any lottery numbers or such. Jesus also revealed Earth's future, including the fall of the Soviet Union, terror attacks within the United States, and the eruption of World War III, which starts with the reunification of the two Koreas, triggering global chaos. The extent of the catastrophe remained uncertain. Asking Jesus why he was shown all this, he received a clear response. Because you need to know what you're facing when you go back. Before he could change his mind, he found himself back in the ambulance in his own body. The paramedic had just used a defibrillator on him. He could taste blood in his mouth, and the wounds he had sustained were searing with pain. Welcome back kid, don't try to speak or move, we're almost at the hospital. Upon reaching the hospital, a team of trauma surgeons was ready to attend to him. One of the surgeons marveled at how he managed to survive. Recovery took time, but during his recuperation, he observed the collapse of the Soviet Union, just as Jesus had shown him. He faced a challenging future, navigating life without his scholarship, reconciliation with his girlfriend, and eventually the birth of their children. The 2001 terror attacks in the United States brought them closer together, while he continued to seek personal growth and reconciliation with those he had wronged in the past. Still, he didn't fully understand why Jesus had shown him all of this. Though forgiveness was sought and offered, some individuals faced the consequences of their actions, with one serving time in prison. As the years passed, his relationship with his wife remained strong, and he cherished the day he might return to that heavenly light. In sharing his story after 31 years, he found a sense of relief and hope, embracing the belief that a better place awaits us all, guided by a watchful Heavenly Father.